Well, I think a lot of people in their mind, when they think about the CME or the major media or the banksters or Goldman Sachs or whatever, or even the Wall Street Journal, it's like us against them. Actually, there's a lot of gray areas. And uh, this is an interesting um, story, not exactly from the Wall Street Journal, but taken from the Wall Street Journal. And it points out, the Wall Street Journal points out the CME, the Chicago Mercantile Exchange, has been exploiting a hidden loophole in their computer systems. And uh, this is not just something where a little investor who's buying a coin of here or silver went left and right sometimes uh, to basically add to his uh, holdings and savings. It's not just them. It's everything across the board. And it's like It's like... There's a lot of professional traders who aren't on the inside, inside loop that are getting screwed over and they know it. So it's like this is becoming the word on the street that there's a lot of cheating going on in the futures exchange. And actually, we can assume a lot of times in the metals markets and even including in a lot of the other areas of uh, all the other commodities that things are actually being pushed down on purpose for a reason to actually maybe prop up the dollar to prop up the dollar strength. It's not so much of a conspiracy as some people think. Um, I want to, before I get into this, I want I did point out, and I want to ad lib here a little bit, because I pointed out there was like major droughts in the United States. I know it's not every single part of the United States, but for the most part, the United States agricultural products got hit very hard last summer, and uh, it really has not recovered yet. And it's not going to recover probably for a couple of years. But yet we're seeing commodities in the food products going down. I know the meat products went down in price because they slaughtered a lot of cattle because they didn't have the corn uh, to feed them. So that put a lot of meat products out on the market. But it's not just in the United States. It's actually globally. It's not even just all about droughts. There's been droughts in Russia and Australia, but it, there's been fluctuations in weather patterns that have been actually conducive to lower crop outputs and also combine that with the bee colony collapses. And yet we're seeing the futures price of foods go down. So I don't know how long that's going to sustain. I think what's going to actually happen is you're going to see the metals fly up and the food prices and energy all fly up together at once unexpectedly. Because I think the physical reality is still there. Like we're noticing it with the metals because everybody concentrates on silver and gold and how much buying's going on. But I almost think there's a lot of that going on with food. Um, there probably isn't as many stockpiles out there. And definitely the output has been greatly diminished. But anyway, to get on with this article, a lot of people don't realize that even in the major media, even in the best, fi even in the established financial circles, it's not like it's cut and dry. It's not just us against them. It's, it's really not true at all. It's really not true at all. So actually the Wall Street Journal reported that the there's high-speed traders that are exploiting a hidden loophole in the Chicago Mercantile's CME uh, computer systems and that they have, they have special knowledge and they're profiting of it. Basically, they can front-run everything inside of milliseconds in a middle, millionth of a second. And um, this was actually put on on a Wall Street Journal. Now, I don't have a subscription to it. Basically, it's an article from an article, but uh, basically, uh, it was Anita Lasky from the Wall Street Journal said that there are times when customers experience a latency of a few milliseconds between the time they receive their trade confirmation and when the information is, ac is accessible to public feeds. He says these delays are, are very consistent and vary across you know, basically, it can, there's delays that happen. So basically, people have better software can get in there and front run people. Now, we also saw what happened with this Russian immigrant who downloaded the proprietary software from Goldman Sachs back some years ago. He's actually serving eight years and one month in prison, effective um, December 2010, for supposedly taking that software. So, you know, it, it's like they know that that software is a major edge to them and actually a lot of traders most traders just don't have access to it so there's a lot of um, you know push against the very top people to stop this type of cheating there is a lot of cheating going on but uh, it was also that um, the finance professor at the University of Maryland it was Peter Kyle um, 
He says that uh, he's also a former member of the Commodity Futures uh, Trading Commission's Technology Advisory Committee. So I guess he knows the insides of what goes on in this software we're trading. He says it's tantamount, what's going on right now is a tantamount to other, as a tax to other traders. Because since somebody's benefiting, somebody's losing. You know, the net sum is still zero, right? So, I mean, if somebody's winning, somebody's losing. Um, so firms uh, can use their early looks at CME trading data in several ways. One strategy is to post, buy, and sell orders a few pennies from where the market is trading and wait until one of the orders is executed. Then they can see what the direction is, and then they can bet accordingly. So it gives them an advantage. Now, does that equate to the entire market's moving up and down just by computer trades? Possibly, because... You know, it's not even just, you know, we focus in on the metals all the time, silver and gold, and we see there's like astronomical amounts of physical buying going on. And in reality now, I mean, uh, before when silver dipped to about 26 something or 27, it there was a lot of out of stock coins, but now it is like pretty much everything is out of stock or on delay for at least a month. It's like now that the price has dropped down into the 24 range, 23 range, and that type of stuff. So there seems to be um, a ba basic disconnect between the futures market and what's really going on physically in the buying. And I also suspect it's like that with food prices. Although, you know, people do not necessarily stockpile food. They just buy it as they need it. Uh, so the demand is possibly, you know, you're not seeing major fluctuations at the supermarket, you know, like going up and down and people are stockpiling food. But I suspect that the price reality even with food is that there's a disconnect too. So, I, you know, it's like I would advise people to actually stockpile on food for the future, not just coins and things like that. And I do realize that in the case of silver, you know, it's really a bottleneck in the coin end product that is actually becoming short. It's like if there's enough time to uh, produce the coins, there's enough silver out there to meet the demand right now. There is, even at these prices. But, you know, it shows you that um, there's a definitely like a bottleneck that's occurring in the end product of coins. And that seems to me to indicate there's a price disconnect. Now, you look at what happened here with this uh, Wall Street Journal article that's out talking about there's unfair advantages that certain people have that have special proprietary software, you probably could not, it's not too far of a stretch of imagination to, to extrapolate that there's probably more manip market manipulation going on than just a certain unfair advantage that some people have special software. There probably is ways to actually move the markets. And actually Goldman Sachs kind of admitted to that when they talked about that proprietary software that that one Russian immigrant downloaded. They, they kind of admitted to that in court that they can actually influence the market. So where there's smoke, there's fire, and there's a lot more to it. And actually, <coughs> after that incident that occurred with uh, Goldman Sachs, there was an individual called Scott Patterson that wrote an entire book last summer, basically last 2012, called Dark Pools, colon, The Rise of the Machine Traders and the Rigging of the U.S. Stock Market. And that's the title of the book. So this book actually came out in the summer of 2012. More mainstream, the Wall Street Journal is actually acknowledging the problems that exist. So, you know, are you a conspiracy theorist to think that the price of silver is not somewhat rigged? No, you're not. And basically it's hitting mainstream right now because what's going on, there's such a select few people that are actually benefiting by it. There's a lot of people that are in the financial industry sector and in the trading sector and people are running these various funds and trying to make money on the markets that are at a total disadvantage and they're getting annoyed at it too. So it's not like the whole bankster element is against you. It's like there's a lot of banksters that are actually on our side because they want more fair competition. I'll just put it that way, you know. Not that somebody is a, a bankster and a trader is the same thing, but you understand what I mean. There's a lot of gray areas in the financial world. So it does look like, um, you know, this is an actual admission from Wall Street Journal. You know, not an admission, but basically an article highlighting the problem that's going on in the uh, Chicago Mercantile Exchange, which is the largest futures exchange in the world. So there's a lot of electronic shenanigans going on, we'll just put it that way. So as the price of silver can do anything, 
I don't know. I'd actually have to put this common sense one-on-one -on -one thing out to you. If the if if these shenanigans keep continuing, there probably will be at some point a disconnect between the physical price of commodities and the futures price. But I have also suspect that there's going to be um, the futures price is actually going to catch up and probably boomerang and go way ahead. And that's usually what happens because when they lose control, you know, and basically it, it, it's like the best shenanigans and the best laid plans have a way of unraveling. And uh, there could be something where, um, you know, the price is actually going to skyrocket forward, you know, unexpectedly. So your safest bet is with the actual physical commodity itself, not the paper commodity. I totally vehemently disagree with people that say that fiat cash is your number one safety right now. I think it's absolutely necessary right now for certain things, but it's not your number one safety. Your probably number one safety is physical commodities, which includes silver, gold, and food, and oil, and, you know, reserve fuels and that type of stuff. This futures market has been, my point on this, this futures market has been acknowledged by a lot of mainstream now to be heavily influenced by computer training and rigged. It's been, uh, and it's been at, you know, addressed in the Wall Street Journal, and it's been addressed by this entire book that came out, which was the title, Dark Pools, The Rise of the Machine Traders and the Rigging of the U.S. Stock Market. And that book just came out in the summer of 2012. And it's, you know, the title's just saying, The Rigging of the U.S. Stock Market Through Computer Trading. So the conspiracy theorists have been saying this for some years. It's now in the established financial media organ. So, you know, you're no longer a conspiracy theorist. It's an absolute fact. 